Hey guys, welcome to an exclusive look at Total War Troy. In this battle, we'll be taking a look at the battle outside of the walls of Troy from a perspective of both Achilles and Hector. Do keep in mind that this is obviously an early look at the battles and the game itself, so things are subject to change. However, the larger kind of theme and scale of the game will probably most likely be kept in check. As well as that, I am also playing on ultra graphics and on large unit scale. Uh, it was kind of locked to the build I was playing at, so just keep that in mind whilst you're watching the footage. But before we do dive into the battle itself, I want to quickly talk about the whole Epic Games debacle that's been going on uh, recently. If you don't know, Creative assembly have announced that total war troy will release exclusively on the epic game store for the first year meaning that it won't be on steam for its first year however if you download it within the first 24 hours on the epic game store you will it will be free to keep forever now in my opinion i'm not the biggest fan of this move i obviously have no issues with the game being on epic game store obviously the more platforms the game reaches the better you know you think how many kids out there playing their fortnites could find total war for the first time that could spark their love of there for strategy games that's absolutely awesome however i hate the fact that the game is exclusive for the first year with zero plans of cross-platform between steam and the epic game store once the game does finally release on steam this basically takes away choices from the consumer which is never a good thing in my opinion and i feel like this move basically is going to kill the longevity of the game it's going to have no game it's going to have no mod workshop and it's going to have uh, basically a very reduced multiplayer pool um, and I, I feel like this is basically a make, gonna make multiplayer dead on arrival. Overall, I think that, you know, as a consumer, it's just suggests to me that they don't really have faith in the game itself to make its money back, so they've sold it to Epic Game Store. That's just my opinion, though. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and uh, now let's just dive into some gameplay um, from the build I was given and see what the gameplay actually is. You know, if the game is amazing, then maybe we could look past this. So let me know what you guys think also about the gameplay you guys are about to see. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have to bring in this battle from Hector's point of view. So obviously we have Hector himself, and uh, it's a pretty new interesting mechanic when it comes to heroes in Total War Troy. From now on, they have a set of abilities which will be gaining through the campaign. However, to use these abilities, it's no longer just a countdown you know you get this countdown and then you pop the ability you have to accumulate rage and rage is accumulated whenever a hero is fighting in battle and you'll be spending this resource on these abilities obviously some resources will cost more than others to use and other abilities will cost a residual uh income of that resource for a consistent boost so for example i believe this one right here uh, applies a divine focus on hector himself giving him a huge bonus to his melee attack and melee interval however he this does cost one rage per second so if he is stuck into combat you can probably make it so he can constantly have this up and like the rage gain is taking away from the rage loss uh, but then you won't be able to use maybe other abilities as quickly and as efficiently you also do get this special ability over the battle as it goes off you'll be able to pop this and this is a once per game ability giving huge bonuses for, for an entire minute to their melee armor and to their attack giving them unbreakable i believe they can't also die and they have no cooldown so you can constantly pop off abilities if you need to and not have to worry if you have a rage requirement and not have to worry about that so i like that i think this is a much better way of doing heroes and using their abilities i think that's a good a good addition Next we have the Trojan Defenders back here. I mean, we can whip up their stats as well so you guys can take a look at that. So right here, you can see that these guys are weight class heavy. In the game, I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but units will be having a completely different class of setup. There'll be light infantry, medium infantry, and heavy infantry. So far from my time playing, I haven't noticed too like greater differences than the, the obvious, which we're already used to. However, they are really trying to specify infantry in this game. So I'm excited to see what they can do more with this. Hopefully they do do more with this because it's kind of a cool concept to have uh, infantry right now really the only thing i've noticed is like the general heavier infantry are obviously going to be tankier they're going to be slower um but it hasn't really made any major differences but again i guess that stuff is subject to change as the builds get you know developed and the game does get further and further to release which we don't even have a release date for but these guys are going to be obviously slow but they have great armor piercing which is a little bit surprising considering they literally have like a mace um which you would assume would be good at breaking armor but I mean, who knows? And they also have excellent defense. So very heavier infantry, uh, lots of 
armor, 85 armor, which is very good. We also <laughs> next have the Champions of Troy. Next, we have the Champions of Troy, which are going to be, obviously, our frontline infantry. Probably one of the highest tier units that we can bring in the entire game. And they look great with their awesome kind of Bronze Age shields. This unit is pretty interesting because, obviously, it's going to be heavy infantry, excellent defense. But it can now switch its weapon mode, so it can whip away its shield and just use this spear as more of an offensive unit. So you'll see me using this in the battle against when I'm fighting light infantry where I don't really need, you know, as much melee defense because they're not going to be doing that much damage. I'm going to whip this bad boy out and then they're going to just go, go to town with their one-handed spear. I'm going to give them a nice little bonus. As you can see, it reduces their melee defense, but does improve their melee attack. You can also see that we do have certain bonuses. So we have a bonus against large here. We have a reduced attack and we also have uh, certain bonuses. We actually just hover over it. You can see that we do have, you know, bonuses versus axemen and swordsmen and large. However, our attack interval, which is how quickly we attack, is going to be reduced a little bit. Because, or, sorry, I think maybe improved because we don't no longer have a shield, which is cool. Spears. We also have some heavy Trojan spearmen. They're going to kind of be like the little version of our champions of Troy. Uh, but, you know, again, can switch their weapon mode, which is nice. We then have Hector's Chosen. These guys are going to be obviously extremely offensive, gaining about 160 damage uh, and also just doing some insane work. Okay, armor piercing, uh, immune to flanking as well. So a lot of Achilles armies is going to be great at outflanking my units, whereas these guys, I'm going to position them on the flank in the battle and they're just going to hold their line. We also have some archers, obviously renowned Whoa. archers, fairly decent unit, going to be able to hammer at range and also uh, their class medium. So medium units can, you know, kind of do a bit of everything. They're not going to die immediately. Um, but again, these guys are archers. So what do you expect from them? I then finally have my Minotaur right here. These guys, uh, or this uh, monster is going to be able to have some cool abilities, reducing the enemy morale on the battlefield for, uh, for, for, 30, uh, for 40 seconds, as well as using his bull rush ability. I try to use this in a battle when it's kind of a bit weird. I'm not sure if it's uh, bugged out at the moment or something, but I basically can't attack anyone. I don't really know what it does, um, but maybe it's just because I, I haven't looked at the ability or something. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just a little bit broken right now. He can also hide in Forest, which is pretty deadly. Uh, and then, sorry, finally, 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 they also have some Trojan defenders. Oh, we looked at them already. So cool, that's going to be my army. Let's dive into the battle and see what we can get done uh, in this engagement. Okay, guys, so we are now in the battle for the outskirts of Troy against Achilles as we are playing as Hector. After this battle, we will jump in and play as Achilles, and you can see it from his point of view, and I'll run through some of the units he are, is using. Obviously, because of the intro, you guys will know that my army is much more of a heavier defensive army. This force is meant to be holding its ground, obviously avoiding mud, which is a pretty interesting new mechanic in the game. Uh, it does feel like they are really trying to you know, add in more arena total war elements, which is obviously a, a cool feature thing. Uh, don't get me wrong. But basically, uh, this mod severely slows up and hinders heavier infantry with the new infantry mechanics of light, medium, and heavy being much more diversified. You know, fighting in this mud is going to be awful for my heavy infantry. It's going to severely impact their movement speed and their capability to fight. So for an army like mine, I want to avoid this like the plague. I obviously have a ton of heavier swordsmen and spearmen, so fighting in the mud is going to be a suicide sentence for me. However, luckily, because I do have these archers, I can kind of keep Achilles uh, at a distance and then force him to come to me. Uh, otherwise, he is just going to lose a lots and lots of soldiers. So that's really good for me. And Achilles' army isn't really going to worry about this heavy mud right here, which you can see uh, where the cavalry are standing all along here because he's got a light infantry army. He's not going to have to worry about that whatsoever. But we'll get more into what Achilles' army is made up in his units when we do dive in and look at the second battle. As well as that, unit ca units can now severely hide in tall grass. However, again, because my army is much more heavier, I don't really have any units that can effectively hide in the tall grass whatsoever. So again, my army is going to be plonked down here, archers firing over the top, heavy infantry holding its ground. And I do really like this. I like, I like the way that they are focusing a little bit more heavily on terrain modifiers. They're giving you kind of more aspects to think about in the game itself, which is obviously always going to be a good thing. So I have Hector uh, back here behind the infantry line. He's ready to buff them up with that rage meter, which we talked about in the intro. You can see Achilles is already rising up because of his special ability. And there we go. The first couple volleys moving in. And oh my God, our arch is devastating in this game. I mean, we are fighting extremely light skirmishes, but even still, I fired like two or three volleys into these guys and they've already lost a handful of their men that is actually kind of uh, disgusting. You know, literally the first three volleys has already decimated this unit down to half strength, which is crazy. 
Now that's going to be the strength of Hector's archers, and they're going to be able to just, you know, focus fire all on one javelin and wipe that away from uh, from Achilles, because Achilles desperately needs these javelins to do any damage to my heavier infantry unless he can outflank. Because, again, uh, we will go on about it more in the second part of the video, but Achilles' army is all about flanking and getting that extra bonus. Uh, it really, really is. So you can see the archers going in. You can also see that Achilles infantry are not really suffering from this movement penalty. The heavier swordsmen will be a lot slower. And you can see they are lagging behind the rest of the army because they are going through this heavy mud. Uh, however, you know, it's not going to be anything crazy. And they'll be able to catch up momentarily. However, this does, you know, lead perfect uh, opportunities for me to keep on harassing the enemy battle line. So yeah, these archer volleys are going to be huge to begin this battle. And you can see Achilles is going to continue to come forward with all of his might charging forward. I do throw forward my own Bull Warrior and I do pop up one of his abilities, the Bull Rush ability. However, I was finding it hard to target anyone, so I'm not sure if that's something you're just supposed to pop off as you dive in. You can also actually see as well, if we do stick it on slow-mo, you can now see uh, that units do have a few more additional modifiers on their unit cards on the battlefield. You now have unit health, which has always been there, morale, stamina, ammunition, vehicle health, which is pretty interesting. That's suggesting we're going to get some pretty exciting siege equipment, I'm hoping, because unless we're going to be in a steam tank or a, you know, an M1 Abrams or something like that, you know, that definitely does suggest that we'll be getting a lot more uh, equipment. Uh, to be using you know, siege towers, maybe even ladders and other stuff like that, which will be exciting. Uh, that's going to all be displayed. There you go. The infantry lines are now clashing. And this is really good for me. Besides this rear charge that the AI did pop off on me, or a side charge, things have gone off pretty well so far in this battle. Achilles is racking up the, uh, racking up the rage, uh, which again, it will give him his uh, Ostera points, which will allow him to use his once per game ability, which gives him huge bonuses, makes him unbreakable, and allows him to do insane damage. But he's going to use that once per battle, and uh, obviously I'm not too scared about that. So we got Hector's chosen the elite infantry defending this left-hand side as best as they can, uh, repelling down the cavalry, and obviously we want to try and tie down this cavalry. I'm obviously also going to be turning around my arch as well and allowing them to focus these guys down heavily. My, uh, my centaur currently is harassing the enemy units and also keeping Achilles at bay. Achilles is heavily focused on trying to chase down the minotaur, which I don't know if there, there needs to be anything different with Achilles focusing down more of a battle line. But right now, Achilles is tunnel visioning on my Minotaur, which is really useful for me in this battle because it allows me to kind of focus this down without uh, out any of the bonuses from Achilles. Because Achilles does provide some really good bonuses. He can spend his, uh, his rage quite effectively. Right here as well, I have now equipped my unit of heavy Trojan Spears, meaning that knowing that I am only fighting a really light unit of Marines, I decided to go ahead and switch the style of fighting of my heavy infantry and make them use that two-handed weapon rather than that shield. So they just have a bit more of offensive capability, which I think they're really trying to go for in these engagements to have that little bonus. You can also see as well, this unit is affected by my Savage Roar. And um, this lasts for about 30 seconds from my Minotaur, which carried, you know, ran off in the distance, but he popped that AOE and then went off. So these guys and their morale is going to be you know, dropping. You can see that white bar as well, already down to half, which is very nice. The right flank is still a little bit scary, but the fact that I've managed to tie down the enemy cavalry is absolutely huge. Because uh, tying these guys down, the fact that the AI isn't retreating these guys is allowing me just to shoot them to pieces. And you can see they are dropping like flies, especially against a heavier infantry unit that just doesn't have to worry about that. The uh, infantry from the heavy swordsmen have also been throwing their javelins and they're going to be looking to reinforce itself. And Hector, right now, he's got his special ability. He can pop it at any point. You can see him right there with that awesome-looking glow. Achilles, I think, maybe has just popped his. I'm not too sure. Maybe I just popped mine. There you go. You can see him popping it in the distance right now. So that's going to give him huge bonuses. So he's got 20% more armor. 30% more melee attack. He's got a Frenzy Vigor, so I assume that means that he just basically, or freezes Vigor, sorry, so basically means he doesn't get tired. He's unbreakable, and he has no cooldowns. So if he has the Rage, he can just pop off ability after ability after ability. And now he is making his way, I believe, back to, he's actually fighting my Minotaur as well right now. So my Minotaur is going to be in a little bit of a tricky situation. Um, however, uh, we are defeating the rest of the army from Achilles. His infantry lines aren't holding. You're not having Achilles in the fight to lead his men. It's uh, yeah, not looking good. And my infantry just outclasses Achilles', Achilles line. If I can hold him in place, 
My men just win out very effectively. They just do not break. The Archer Fire can hammer in hard. And you can see if we take a look at the overall look of the battlefield. The gaps are appearing. The cavalry on the left-hand side are broken. I've got infantry around the side ready going for a wonderful charge. If we look on that left-hand side, you can see that my infantry are about to come flying into the rear. Of this unit of heavy swords, but that's going to decimate their morale, and they're not going to be sticking around for too long. Uh, you got my Minotaur as well. My Minotaur's kind of been taking all the punishment, uh, but it's, it's kind of been okay. Uh, we have been popping off abilities, so I've, I've gone ahead and dropped my Divine Focus from Hector as well with the 50 extra melee attack for all the units around him. It's going to be really, really helpful uh, and allow him to push up. And just like that, the forces are victorious. Uh, we do have a terrified debuff on our Minotaur, but victory is going to be won right there. And it was a fairly simple battle, uh, nothing too crazy to really behold. Um, and again, it, it's, to, it's to be expected. We're kind of just checking out the mechanics of a battle in this one. It was it was pretty easy, but we are we were playing the easy ba battle mode because I just wanted to check out the mechanics of the engagements because balancing is obviously going to change massively throughout the game itself so cool now let's jump into the achilles side of things we'll check out what units and, and styles that achilles fights with and then we'll take a look at how i played on the other side of things now is the time to look at Achilles and his force of Myrmidon. So Achilles himself has a whole range of really offensive abilities, whereas Hector was much more defensive. Achilles is just going to be all about that damage, racking up kills, and you know just trying to whip out their lords and their heroes as quickly as possible. So again, he's going to have some really nice uh, bonuses. He also has the Divine Challenge, which automatically forces a hero within 10 meters to fight him, which is obviously exactly what he wants to be doing as more of a uh, offensive hero in the battle his uh, special ability is having exactly the same i think this is the same for all the epic heroes in the game they are also killed called epic heroes uh, rather than just heroes or anything so i imagine that's kind of just like a step up and maybe there's an ability maybe there's a chance for like your normal heroes to become epic uh, heroes in the game who knows that'd be kind of a cool addition but if we take a look at the rest of his army we have the spear fighting uh Mimirodons right here these guys are medium infantry so again they're not going to get stuck down as fast as say hector's infantry are in the mod and that's exactly what we're going to trying to do is trying to force hector's units into the mud in this battle and use that speed these guys are immune to flanking so a great unit to have on my front line um, and can kind of out position the enemy very effectively then also have the sword variant of them and again these guys medium infantry class they're expert in flanking so these guys are great units to go round the sides and hit in and do that damage uh, yeah, you can see a little bit as well about a good old flanking maneuver it doesn't tell you exactly what it does or maybe it does down here uh, it just says improve flanking, so basically they just get bonuses whenever they flank. Uh, so yeah, again, these guys are going to be getting stuck in, doing some decent damage, and trying to uh, yeah out overrun the enemy, which again, we do do pretty nicely in this battle. Then also have the Thessalians. Uh, again, you know, where infantry class is going to be medium. These guys do have the stalk ability, so they can hide very effectively and move in tall grass. So I think there's a few positions over on this right-hand side we could utilize it in, as the battlefields have way more of this tall grass now. We could stick our infantry in here, and kind of like use that to outflank and take down the enemy and also have another unit right here as well these guys have swift foot so they can uh, move around and, and attack enemies pretty effectively and they can also evade enemy missile fire which is really important considering they don't have a shield um, so yeah these marines are going to be able to move in and uh, again just kind of looking to outflank the enemy as best as I can then I have two units of javelins we have the unit of javelin throwers who don't have a shield whatsoever but they have great armor piercing they're also light infantry so they can move a lot faster Javelins and then we have ready. the other unit of javelins who actually do have their shield. So these guys are going to give them a little bit of an extra protection. Uh, but again, still just classed as light infantry. Uh, towards the end ready. of our line, we do have some chariots. These guys are going to be devastating at hitting into the rear of enemy men. As long as they keep moving, they're going to be able to just absolutely slaughter. They are heavy chariot. That is their class. And yeah, their charge bonus is going to be great. You can see that they're going to be getting some good bonuses against enemy large units and also... Uh, surprisingly not against missiles or anything they have kind of a slow attack uh but you know overall the charge bonus is going to make up for that Cavalry. and we also have the centaur warriors as well and i think this unit is going to be kind of like a regiment of renowned-esque style uh as they're kind of specifically shown as the savage centaur warriors and they have these horns so i think this is not going to be a unit you're going to have all over the battlefield but maybe you'll get one or two of these by doing missions or i don't I mean i honestly have no idea but either way just a unit of cavalry 
Um, as it does seem like they don't really want much cavalry on the battlefield as they just want kind of more chariots and heavy infantry and kind of more of that ground combat. So yeah, that is going to be Achilles' armies. Let's see what he can do against Hector's force. You saw how, how much we wiped away Achilles in the last battle. Let's see how we can do it from Achilles' point of view and if we can get closer to the Eternal City of Troy. Okay, so we are now on as Achilles. You guys would have just have seen all the units that I am bringing. Obviously, as you can tell from that, I've got a much lighter army. So I want to try and close that distance, pin in Hector on the mud so I can utilize that and fight him in this area. So his units are much slower. They're a lot, you know, harder to react. And then what I can do is I can use this hill to push down, nullify his missile advantage because he does have slingers along with some other units as well uh, that are just going to you know, give me a bad, bad rep. Engage his front line, my light infantry, and then hammer that rear line with my missiles and my chariots. I had deployed my chariots out here in the mud, which is going to make him give him a little bit of time to actually break through this. But it shouldn't be anything too much to worry about. So we'll kick off this engagement. As you can see, the, the initial phase is just to get in this woodland as quickly as possible. Hector is going to quite quickly reform his battle line. Uh, but I believe that will leave some men over to the left-hand side. He does have some light infantry out here. Uh, which are going to be trying to chase down my chariots. So again, they can fight quite effectively in the mud. But if I can pin down a unit of guards of, the guards of Troy or something in that mud, that's going to be huge. And already I am being hammered by missile fire. The slingers are going ham right now, picking away uh, my soldiers, whittling down that HP. And, you know, the, the spear fighting Myrmidons, they're not supposed to be here just absorbing missile fire, and they are starting to drop their HP. The front lines are now going to clash, and that Minotaur, along with Hector himself, are going to come flying in. So I've kind of managed to minimize that missile advantage just a tad by closing in the distance. And I've also managed to position my javelin men up, hill on, up on this hill so they can fire into the combat fairly effectively without too much friendly fire. And they're also, because they are in the hill side, because they're in the forest, they can use that really effectively because they're going to be receiving a lot less missile fire because they're protected by the trees and the tall grass. So, yeah, they can just fire into all of this heavy infantry, which is obviously what they are designed to do. They're going to be fighting some Trojan warriors, so some medium infantry, some light infantry. But obviously, it's the heavier boys back here that I want to deal with, uh, as the Trojan warriors are going to be a lot scarier. However, because I've managed to pin the enemy infantry lines in place, my cavalry is opening up and I'm about to come in with the ultimate Trojan sandwich right here. I've got cavalry on one side, I've got chariots on the other, and then a sweet filling in the center of Trojan slingers. I mean, what else is there left to take? Also, you can see some of my Myrmidons are also throwing some javelins as well at the enemy, which are always cool. But I'm going to be utilizing this faster infantry right round the flanks to try and utilize uh, their flanking ability, which gives them a great boost to damaging morale and also their fighting capabilities whenever they're attacking in the rear. You can see that Hector has popped off one of his healing abilities right here. This is going to be replenishing units over time and increasing hit point replenishment. So again, more of that Warhammer fantasy style of battle. And we're going to just take a look at this rear charge right now. Oh baby, these poor slingers. Don't know what's about to hit them. First off, the cavalry comes in and then the chariots. The chariots are going to be the ones really dealing that damage because of their huge impact. And just like that, the whole of Hector's missiles are going to be breaking and routing from the field of battle. The rest of the fast-moving Myrmidons, you can see that the Myrmidons are engaged. And you can also see how fast these Thessalians are, quickly wrapping up the enemy battle line and moving in. You can also see that I do have some fast moving infantry over here just chasing down the enemy uh, and drawing the guards of Troy into that mud and already you can see the differences in the speed of the units right here. The guards of Troy are severely hampered there from being in that mud and now my units can just engage them and hopefully have a bit of a better time. I'm also moving over more of my spearmen as well to throw in their javelins. As you can see, movement is extremely fast. These battles are fast, you know. Definitely more of a Warhammer fantasy feel to these engagements. But I'm going to make another video, like I said in the intro, about kind of is this a historical game, is this a fantasy game, and kind of go from there. You can see Achilles and Hector have now faced off with the new dueling mechanic. There is no duel mechanic in quotation marks anymore. Uh, just whenever heroes are close to each other, they're going to generally find out each other on the battlefield and go in for that, which I much prefer. It's a much cleaner way of things happening, uh, and I think it's much better for these style of games rather than the, uh, the, current, the current duel mechanic that is going on in like Free Kingdoms. 
for sure. Uh, I think it just suits the game a lot better and it kind of makes it flow a lot easier. And there you go. You can see Hector popping off his major bonus. And all of a sudden, he is going to murder Achilles. Balancing in this version of the game definitely does need some improvement. Um, but again, that's, you know, we haven't even got a release date for, for this game yet, so we can definitely expect it. Um, but at the moment, in this current build, Hector annihilates Achilles, which I'm assuming people wouldn't be too happy about. I'm going to be throwing in my chariots now, just looking to break the rest of the enemy. I also decided to start bringing out some of my men. But again, you know, I managed to completely envelop the enemy line in this battle. Uh, again, it wasn't going to be too hard whatsoever. But yeah, we basically just utilized the trees to our advantage. Our javelins uh, were safe enough that our missiles could completely shut down. Uh, sorry, our cavalry could completely shut down Hector's. Uh, back line and then our javelins just took down his infantry as the rest of our boys came around really utilized that extra flanking capabilities and moved on from there which was really nice indeed so this is we're getting the infantry lines moving on now i think i think it's only hector left remaining in this battle the rest of the men are going to be going down. Hector is going to be popping off a lot of bonuses, though. I mean, look at that. He's got, if we pause it really quickly, you can actually see all of Hector's abilities. He's currently got Divine Focus, so insane bonuses uh, to his stats. He's got Unbreakable. He's immortal right now, so he just can't die. Uh, so I think, imagine if he goes down to 1 HP, he just stays alive until this buff runs out. He's also got the Stout, which is giving him, again, an additional boost to his attack damage and also his melee attack. And he's also replenishing. So that's going to be a hard unit to bring down. Achilles, however, is not faring too well. He's going to be able to boost up his rage bar completely. And I believe Achilles is going to be dropping off his uh, special ability soon. There you go. That's going to give him his major bonuses. And he also does have 100 rage, I believe, right now as well. So he's going to just go in, engage, engage Hector. And we have completely surrounded him. And Hector's basically just sticking around. His army is broken. But Hector is going to stay around until... Uh, until the uh, his ability runs off and he doesn't become unbreakable anymore. And then Hector is just going to get the hell out of here because the battle is lost. He's going to retreat back to the city. And this is, I think this is kind of a, a fun ability. I definitely think heroes have been greatly improved in this version uh, of, of Total War Troy. Uh, it really honestly has. Because it basically just means that, you know, you're going to have a lot more uh, strategy to when to pop abilities. Having that rage bar fill up and when to use it and what abilities to use it on is great. Rather than just kind of cooldowns, there's a little bit more to that uh, than anything else. And right there, you can see that Hector does end up falling back. He is getting absolutely slaughtered by my javelin fire, though. He really is. And goes down. You can even see his face right there. He's like, oh no, Paris! <laughs> Not looking great there whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, that is going to be my look at both the Achilles and the Troy, uh, sorry, and the Hector side of things with what we got to see. Overall, I think the game is definitely interesting with the, the route it's going. It's going definitely the fantasy route of things. But again, I'll have a completely separate video to talk about that. I do really like the new mechanics with the the mud and the you know long grass playing a much larger role in things but they are kind of minor so we'll have to see we'll have to see what else the game has to offer we've got to remember that this is still very you know is still the game is in development this is just a battle they're showing we haven't got a release date yet either so i assume more things are subject to change rather than if we did have a release date overall though you know it kind of you know it, it looks fun it looks interesting i'm really excited to see more about the campaign and hopefully you know when we get larger battles we'll, we'll be able to see this kind of all these mechanics kind of flowing in one another because right now it is kind of hard to see what units are heavy what units are light from an overall battle view uh, but again we'll have to see what they do with that um so yeah let me know what you guys thought of the, the battles uh, in the comments down below uh i also will have another video out like i've been mentioning through the video talking about is this a historical game is this a fantasy game and kind of going through more of my opinions on what i think the the, the, the mechanics are like yeah, i'll go into a lot more detail on that so make sure to check out that video and i'll see you guys in the next one